biking, the romance of arriving to your destination under your own power, and the necessary components of any city's transportation ecosystem. The Capital Bike Share program was launched in 2010, one of several cities who also launched programs that year. However, it wasn't the first bike share program in DC, that being Smart Bike DC, which had a modest run in 2008. But Capital Bike Share is where the concept really came into its own. Fast forward to 2024 and you have over 700 docks and 6,000 bikes. Pair that with an expanding bike lane network and you have a nice little system on your hands. There is a problem though that persists, no matter how good the planning is. And that's the issue of docks being balanced. Let's say you decide you wanna go for a ride. You walk to the closest dock and nary a bike to be had. Or consider the scenario where you did get a bike. You're on your merry way to your destination only to arrive to a completely full dock, meaning you need to go to the next closest dock to find an opening. This is a rebalancing conundrum in a nutshell. Help, I'm in a nutshell. This is a somewhat surprisingly complex math problem with no shortage of research papers tackling it. How do you ensure that the docks are balanced right in that Goldilocks zone where everybody who wants to take a bike or leave a bike aren't left stymied? An obvious remedy is one that's already employed by the brains of the system. Have employees take bikes from fuller docks to emptier docks using delivery vans. But these Valiant rebalancers can't be everywhere at once, which is where I come in. I am a bike angel. Capital Bike Share figured out somewhere along the way that there are enough transit dorks in the city who would jump at the opportunity to help out. The Bike Angel program allows people who have memberships to rebalance bikes at their own leisure. A live updated map shows the docks that need bikes and the docks that need to get rid of bikes. The docks that are particularly in need will award more of these imaginary points to encourage angels to tend to them first. Whoever designed the program deserves a ton of approbation. At certain point thresholds, you'll be given free e-bike credits, water bottles, a Pokemon-esque collection of pins that you can get, and at the top of the mountain, you get a prized backpack. There is something mesmerizingly transfixing about gazing into that live updating map calculating how best to chart your rebalancing run. On top of that, a leaderboard shows you how many points other bike angels have. And naturally you wanna be at the top of that list at the end of the month, because being at the top of arbitrary lists is just something that's deep within our lizard brains. Does it matter that it's for imaginary points redeemable for kitschy pins? Uh, I don't think it does. There are far stupider lists to be at the top of. <laughs> I love bike angeling because it's simultaneously a puzzle, a form of exercise, a civic service, and a math problem. Why don't we hit the street and I'll show you how it's done. Taking from here, dropping over here. The more rides you do in a row, the higher the multiplier. So this first trip only yields two points. Hey now. Easy does it. Normally this dock awards more points because it's at the top of a hill. Most people don't feel like riding to the top of the hill. E-bikes certainly make this part a little easier. So now you see this dock bumps up to four points. So let's feed from here to here. Got a lot of people who leave e-bikes right outside their house. Well, not on my watch. Return to the docks and get those sweet, sweet points. These cats were not giving me the cuddly vibe. More the hunt rats for survival type than the receive wet food three times a week type, you know what I mean? And that concludes today's outing. See you next time.